guys, Warner and the Barry Bot 3D. Um, I'm doing a video for a few of, the, of my buddies from the forum. Uh, it seems like people can't get enough details, and the response to um, the videos that I put up on YouTube were pretty amazing. So I really appreciate that, and the only reason I'm doing it is because you guys show a lot of interest in it. Um, I got some really interesting things that I've been working on. Um, I had talked about briefly about uh, doing the end effectors with uh, dimples instead of uh, machining out those little uh, sockets that I did. And uh, it actually worked out really terrific. So I'm going to give some more detail about that. Um, probably do that on a separate video. On this one, we're going to go ahead and tear down the... Um, talk a little bit about the frame and uh, tear down the hot... Uh, the platen and let you see what I did for the high voltage um, heater for that. It's really working out awesome. Uh, it ramps up to 125 degrees C uh, really quick in comparison to um, the silicone pad that I had originally. And um, yeah, it's been working really great. I've been doing a lot of prints, uh, mostly in the evenings. I go to bed at night, wake up in the morning, and I've got a print. Um, I'm really, really, uh, really happy with it. Uh, a couple of people asked me about calibration. I haven't done any calibration. The numbers I had, I got from CAD, and I just plugged them into Marlin. So um, uh, I see that I can do a little bit of improvement, although I'm really happy with what I've got. Uh, I did some prints of some uh, more test cubes um, around in different areas, because people seem to really have a, a, a thing about uh, printing off, uh, you know, off the center. And mathematically, it shouldn't make any difference where it is. Um, uh, it does amplify, you know, if something's not right and something's not square, it does seem to amplify it, um, looking at the math on it. So, you know, having said that, not everybody's going to be able to produce a machine, you know, unless they have CNC machines, produce something identical to it. But, um, you know, having said that, I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, I printed this off center, about 100 millimeters off center, and anybody that's printed these knows that it's got to be pretty good, otherwise they just don't work. Uh, so this is a 100 uh, millimeter, one of those gear pulley bearing uh, jobbers. Really neat. Uh, it's just amazing it can do that. Um, but anyways, yeah, these test cubes, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not far off from what I did in this, the one in the center that I did the video on. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and bring the camera over and we'll do a quick tear down of uh, the platen. One thing I do want to mention on the frame, you know, I've built a lot of equipment and uh, my personal opinion is that you really need to start with a good base. I mean, you look at precision things like race cars, you know, big CNC milling machines, they all, you know, have really precision and really good framework. And um, the first thing I did in designing this was the same idea that I wanted to have a really good base and a really good frame for it. And so I'm going to show some more details on, um, on what I did for the, for the actual base and the construction of it. Um, I've got a little, um, a small video clip that shows the expanding and uh, exploding and um, uh, putting it back together in solid work so that you can take a look at that. It'll give you a really good idea. Anybody that sees it could go ahead and reproduce it I think without any problem. This is really cool. I'm going to show you some stuff on the um, on this uh, end effect or the new one. Uh, really easy to do. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and bring the camera over, and we'll we'll take a look at this um, this hot or the platen heated platen. Okay, guys, I got my screwdriver in hand, so we'll go ahead and tear it apart and uh, show you what it looks like. I just had this glass cut up at a local glass shop, 20 bucks. It's just regular glass. I see a lot of people using fancy glass and stuff and uh, not sure why they're doing that. Um, anyways, it's just regular glass. And I just have three 632 screws that mount the top of uh, this aluminum plate down. That's easy enough. Now this this material here is uh, all it is is fiberglass, and I've got two layers of it. Uh, the reason it's blackened around this edge is that I've used um, CA uh, glue 
um, just to keep the weave together, keeps it from coming coming apart, defraying. Uh, so um, there's actually just two layers. It's like uh, it's like eight or nine ounce uh, fiberglass, and it's an insulator for because this is carrying a, a high voltage, 115 volt electrical current in this uh, this coil right here, and so you need to insulate that from the bottom of the aluminum, and that's the purpose of this, which works good. Uh, this right here is a nichrome wire. It's 40 thousandths nichrome, and I buy it from a company called Omega Engineering. And uh, I'll show you what a spool of it looks like. This is it right here. Um, I'll pull it out so you can see it. I've used this for a lot of different projects, and it really works great. Uh, this is the actual spool. And uh, you can see right here it's uh, 40 thousandths nichrome uh, wire and so it just makes it easy you know you could you could just McMaster car order yourself up some 40 thousandths nichrome wire put it on the lathe and spin it but I don't know man for, <laughs> it's not all that much money to have it in this and uh, you can use it for all kinds of things vacuum forming machines powder coating ovens uh, this stuff is awesome anyways that's what I used for this coil now this material here um, this is a uh, a uh, insulation board and I use this same stuff in my powder coating oven I use three quarter inch thick material this here is half inch I got it from McMaster car I'm sure there's probably a better source but I haven't been able to find it uh, neat thing about this stuff is that it's machinable so what I did is I just took an end mill and in my uh, CNC router I just uh, I would just went ahead and milled this um, um, snail like pattern in there and uh, it fit in there really nicely um, I'll let you take a little closer look I do have uh, this little black spot that you see right here this is JB weld and what I did is I, I made a little pocket with my um, uh, Fordome tool a Dremel tool made a little pocket in here for the um, thermistor and then I just put JB weld and put a, a, a flat piece of aluminum over it until it cured so it's actually embedded in here this JB weld can handle some pretty extreme temperatures um, I don't know you'll see in the video for when I'm doing the end effector there's a lot of iron in in that epoxy so I think that's the reason it can handle it as well as it does now the other thing I wanted to point out and this is really important for anybody that's doing this um, you know I sleep pretty good at night uh, you know knowing my machines going all night uh, for a couple of reasons one is that the when you build this, uh, you can figure out how many ohms uh, by putting an ohm meter on the end of this coil and go out till it's about 30 ohms. So you stretch this material out, put your ohm meter on one end of it, and start running it down until you get 30 ohms. Um, I can tell you from my testing, 30 ohms is going to get you right in the neighborhood of 150 to 170 degrees C. And, um, you know, the, that's the first safety thing, is that if it was powered on, it's not going to glow red hot. Now, in my powder coating oven, I did the same thing, but it's at about 15 ohms. So, you know, at, a, at 115 um, uh, volts, you're looking at quite a few, varying from, you know, 8 to, to you know, 12 amps, something, something like that. And um, it'll gl get glowing red hot. Um, you know, so the first safety thing is that you don't want it glowing red hot. Um, I know there will people there will be people that want to get it that hot, so it gets up to temperature real quick. But for me, I didn't mind it being an extra, you know, few minutes uh, getting up to 125 degrees C um, for doing ABS. Uh, in which case, it's mine's right at actually about 20, I think 28 ohms. Um, somewhere around there 26 28 ohms but it does a really nice job and even if it was left on you don't have to worry about it uh, the other big safety thing and this is something I truly believe anybody that's doing it should do is this little black it looks like a resistor and I'll give you the um, the specs for this um, what it is is a it's a special device that's got a material in it that when it, if it gets too hot it'll actually disc uh, it'll fu it act as a fuse and just disconnect it. So I have the signal coming out of my uh, Rambo board. It goes through this and then goes to the solid state solenoid, um, uh, solid state relay rather, um, 25 amp solid state uh, 
relay. So if this pops, for some reason, some freakish reason, this thing was to get more than about 160 degrees C, this would pop, which would also shut it down. So, um, you know, that's another thing I think it's really important. It's only a couple bucks. You can get it from DigiKey, and I'll try to give you the link down in the, um, in the comment area. But, um, yeah, it's worked really terrific. Now, I do, um, I've got a, a few standoffs. These are just uh, made out of uh, Teflon, and so that there's some airspace between this um, deflector. This is stainless steel. And uh, this is silicone here, and this is actually formed and polished where this goes through, so it's not at all sharp. But um, yeah, this just lays down on here. Now this whole thing is held down just with some, held off of there with some springs. These little, um, uh, look like beehive, um, I think conical uh, springs is all that holds it up against the aluminum. Now, one of the main things that I like to do is to have everything on this thing floating. So you'll see there's quite a bit of play in this plate. I also use stainless steel because it's got a low um, uh, thermal expansion um, characteristic uh, versus like aluminum. And so uh, that was the reason for using the stainless. And then this whole thing is just sprung. So that what the idea is is that as the uh, aluminum plate expands and contracts, this stuff can move around, um, which makes it better as far as getting a, having the problem of bowing. Uh, a lot of people have posted stuff on the forums. I think what happens is a lot of people are locking their plates down and then, uh, you know, to a really rigid fixture, fixture, and then when it does heat up, it's got no place to go. So it ends up, uh, you know, being either concaved or, or bowing up or down. And in which case, you know, it just messes up your registration, uh, especially when you're doing a large, a large part. So I think that's one, one of the reasons that um, I've had quite a bit of success and have, haven't had any problems, uh, you know, keeping the, the platen really nice and flat. So, um, yeah, as you can see, it's really quite simple. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them and I'll try to get to them. But, uh, yeah, it's working out really well. These little, I do have some little, um, eventually I think these are ceramic right here. Although I used some Teflon and I decided I wanted it slightly higher to get a little more air uh, flow. Oh, one other thing I wanted to point out is I do have a, a hole here. And this is a pressure. This is all, um, this whole thing was designed so that it's sealed up. There is a slit um, in the edges here and I'll show it to you in a second. And this hole right here, and this the purpose of this hole down in here is to let air flow up to the underside of this thing. Um, 20, 125 degrees C is actually quite hot. <laughs> and um, so that really, uh, that helps tremendously in, in, you know, not letting the heat get to the base. And it's worked out good. <clears throat> so uh, I'll show you this one other detail that I was talking about just a second ago. The... This fan, there's a fan over here, and you can see it right here. This fan blows really good. It, it pumps quite a bit of air into this, into this, um, into this uh, base, but you'll see right here, see this space right here between the top plate and these side frames? This, this is the same top and bottom all the way around, and that's by design. The idea is that this will work like a radiator when the air is being... Uh, forced through this, this, these cracks, uh, these uh, 16th inch grooves that go all the way around. And that's just to help cool it. Um, and it seems to be doing a really good job. Now there's also so much air going through it that air comes out through that hole in the center of the, um, of the platen. So that helps to keep, uh, uh, keep the uh, airspace uh, in between the platen and the, uh, the base a little bit cooler. Uh, in the long run, I think that's just going to be be better. But um, yeah, this Teflon, this Teflon material, I get all this stuff from McMaster Car just because it's convenient. You can save a lot of money, you know, buying it at other places. But you know, I get 12 inches of it. They have it to me sometimes the same day or the next day when I place the order. So I end up buying quite a bit of stuff from McMaster Car. But anyways, well, give it a shot, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you.